Here we are. Um, section 11.1, Areas of Parallelograms. And of course, completely optional, just for fun, if you're really interested, you can go ahead and look at these two links, but once again, only have lots of time. Kind of quirky, kind of fun, kind of crazy, and completely optional. So moving right along to the lesson here, and oh my gosh, this is just like in class. Right now, that little screen thing is going red, blue, green, purple, and now I have to wait for it to catch up so I can turn it. All right, quick review of distance formula. You're going to need another distance formula for this lesson. Oh, let's see. Test yourself. Can you do it? Press pause. See if you write it down. All right. Probably you didn't press pause. Here we go. D equals the square root. X doesn't matter to me what your little subs are, but X2 minus X1 squared plus Y2 minus Y1 squared. Distance formula. Remember that's Pythagorean theorem in disguise. It used to look something like this. You'd have a squared plus b squared, in this case equals d squared. And how do you undo a square? You square root. Okay, and how do you find a and b? You take the difference of your x values, you take the difference of your y values. All right, so distance formula. There it is. Review of a parallelogram. What is a parallelogram again? Opposite sides are parallel. This side, oops, wrong kind of mark. Not only are they congruent, but they are also parallel. This and this are parallel, and this side is parallel to this side over here. Oh, beautiful. Also, the opposite sides are congruent. Um, just a few things about parallelograms that you need to know. Um, oh yeah, remember how I said this is going to come back to haunt you, 30, 60, 90 triangles? Here they are. No longer is this the lesson. I expect you to know this. So I'm going to review it here, and then you're on your own for the rest of the chapter. I will not be going over it again. All right. First, has to be a right angle. Um, this will be your 30. This will be your 60. All right. You have a short side. You have a long leg, and you have a hypotenuse. Your short side is always half the hypotenuse. Okay, so if I'm going to go from the hypotenuse to the short side, I'm going to take it times a half or divide by two. If I want to go the other way, if I want to go the short side to the hypotenuse, I do the opposite, times two. I'm going to draw that in there to get up here. You take it times two. The other way, to go from the short side to the long leg, you take it times square root 3. If I need to do the reverse on the back way, then I'm going to go ahead and divide by square root 3. That is your quick review. You need to know this because it will pop up here and there and everywhere. Review of 45, 45, 90 triangle. Please recall these sides are congruent. If the sides are congruent, then these angles are congruent. So it might be sneaky. They might tell you the angles are congruent, or they might tell you the sides are congruent. Then you have legs that are congruent. Take the leg times square root 2. And if you want to go the other way, then you're going to divide by square root 2. So if you want to get from the hypotenuse, this side is your hypotenuse, then you're going to turn around and divide by square root 2. I'm recording. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. And so now your legs, taking time square root 2 to get the hypotenuse, divide by square root 2 to get a leg. That is your review of 45, 45, 90 triangles. And, of course, I will not go over it again. It has got to be in your notes. This is the last time I'm covering it. All right, the area of a parallelogram, and we'll discuss in class why this is or how we know it. Most of you know it's going to be the same as a rectangle, which will derive all of our formulas out of rectangles anyway. So, base times height. All right, you got to be careful with your parallelograms. You may be turning your book, you may be turning your paper sideways or any way to look at it. It doesn't matter which one is the base, um, but I'm going to call this right here my base. Okay, and then my height is not the slant. The height is how far it is from the bottom of the parallelogram 
straight up to the top of the parallelogram. That's your height. Okay? I often say, and I might say this in class, you got to park your parallelogram in the garage. How tall does the garage have to be? It doesn't have to be as tall as the slanty line. We don't care. I don't know if you can see that right there. The slanty line is not our concern. It's how tall it is from the bottom to the top. All right? Now, let's just say, for instance, oh, oh, that's so cool. Let's say your parallel, the parallelogram looks like this. Then you can call this the base if you want. And then the height is how tall do you have to make your garage in order to park it. It has to go from the height, the very top of the parallelogram, right down to the bottom of the parallelogram. So this is your base, and this is your height on that particular one. And it doesn't matter which way you do it, it should be the same either way. All right, I'm going to stop. And so your lesson, like the information, is on this first video, and the next video will be the example problems. So you will now have to move on to the next video.